So how can you use custom user properties to better understand your results in Google Analytics or Firebase? And more importantly, why am I wearing a suit? Let's find out the answers to these questions in today's video. So as we discussed in our last video, which you should probably watch if you haven't yet, Google Analytics for Firebase is all about recording events that happen within your app and sending them over to the Firebase console so that you can get some information about them. And while seeing this data in aggregate is nice, sometimes you want to break this down into more specific user segments. I mean, sure, it's great to see people are visiting your in-app store, but who are these people? Are they tablet owners, new users, Canadians? Knowing who these people are can make it easier for you to personalize your app, create better user experiences, and get better results. Now, by default, Google Analytics for Firebase already provides a number of segments for you. You can filter any particular event by device type or country, and if you have ad support enabled, gender and age as well. But very often, your app will have its own specific user properties that you'll want to use to filter your data. An exercise app, for instance, might want to see how users with different fitness goals behave. For example, do your yoga enthusiasts subscribe to your newsletter more often than your runners? Well, that's something you can start to find out if you filter your data against these custom user properties. So let's take a moment to understand how user properties work. On the client, you set user properties simply by defining key value pairs in the code. Google Analytics for Firebase keeps track of what user properties you've defined for this user, and from that point on, when you fire off an analytics event, analytics will associate that event with all the user properties that you've defined up until then. Now, one important thing to know about analytics is that all those reports and graphs that you're looking at in the Firebase console, they're basically calculated for you ahead of time, including the ones where you're filtering by a user property. Which means that after setting a user property in code, you also need to head over to the Firebase console and tell it which user properties you're going to want to see filtered in the Firebase console. Now, once you've done that, Firebase will go ahead and make sure that when it's generating a report for your button click or game over event, it breaks up these reports by each of the values in the user properties it's tracking. Now, all this has a few implications for you as a developer. First, user properties are not retroactive. Once you've set a user property for a particular user, any and all future events will be associated with that property. But don't expect that previous events will be updated. Those remain unchanged. Now, on a related note, I would recommend keeping your user properties to a smallish number of discrete values if you want to make your life easier. For instance, imagine I got myself a mobile game. Creating a user property that's equal to an individual player's high score is probably not helpful, at least not in the world of the Firebase console. Like, think about how many hundreds of checkboxes you would need to check just to get some meaningful data together about a group of players. So instead, I'm probably better off creating a user property where I can group more users together. Like, maybe I have a user property with values equal to a range of scores. Or maybe I just go with some text descriptions instead. In fact, you'll see in the API that values for these things are always stored as strings, and that's generally to encourage this type of behavior. So with that in mind, let's set some user properties for real. Remember this app from the last video, the one we were recording like button presses and slider adjustments? Well, our marketing team has this theory that cat people are more likely to adjust that slider than dog people, and they want to back up that claim with data. So let's see how. So first off, you can see that in my view did appear, I've added a method that asks my users if they're a dog or cat person. This should look pretty straightforward if you've ever used a UI alert controller. So what we want to do in the results is store that information in a user property. Now, the code to do this is pretty straightforward. In my cat person handler, I'm going to set a property by typing analytics, set user property, cat underscore person, for name, dog, or cat. Note that you set the value first and then the key name. I often get that mixed up when I'm first setting these things. So uh, just remember that this follows the same pattern as adding values to something like an NS mutable dictionary, and you'll be OK. By the way, we have no official recommendation as to whether or not you should go with like camel case or underscores. Just stay consistent and make sure that your Android team is using all the same user property names and values as you are, or you will drive yourself bonkers. Anyway, now I'll do the same in my dog person handler method. Analytics, set user property, dog underscore person, for name, dog or cat. And uh, OK, that's all we need for code. Let's test it out. So I'm going to run my app, and I'm going to say that I am a cat person. And you can see that because I still have debug mode enabled for analytics, there is this line in the Firebase console that reports that my user property was set. And that's nice, but do you remember debug view, that nice panel in the Firebase console I showed you last video to help with all of your analytics debugging? Well, user properties also show up there. So let's go to my project and open up debug view. 
And then over here on the right, you can see that it's listing all the current user properties for this particular user. And sure enough, it's showing that I am a cat person. And if I look far enough back in my timeline of events, you can see the moment where it recorded that I was a cat person. And now let's take a look at some of the events it recorded since then. If I click on one of these, then click on user properties here on the right, you can see that it's associated the cat person property with this event. And by the way, all this would also work if I were to go back and decide that, hey, you know what, I actually like dogs better. If I make that change, you can see that the change to the user property will appear on my timeline. My current user properties will change to dog person. And if I look at user property details for any events that happen after that change, the new user property is included there as well. So everything seems to be working just fine from the code standpoint, but remember, I also have to register this user property with a Firebase console so that it knows to filter future reports based on this value. So I'll click on user reports here on the left, and I'll click create your first user property to create one. And this is the one place you do need to be extra careful. You can register up to 25 custom user properties, but right now you can't delete or rename these things once you've entered them. So don't fill this up with like a ton of test cases or experimental user properties. And do make sure you get the name right and don't misspell it or anything. In fact, I really just like to copy and paste the property name directly from my code just to make sure. And in fact, that's what I'm doing here. All right, so uh, I'll add a little description. I'll double check to make sure this looks good, and it does. And so we can create it. And now at this point, the Firebase console knows that it should be prepared to filter all of its analytics reports by this value in the future. So I'm gonna go back and play with my app a little more, and then I'll wait a few hours and check out my results in the Firebase console. Okay, so it's been some time later. Let's go and take a look at these events. I'm here at the Firebase console, and I will click on events, and then select my adjust slider event. And now I can switch the drop down here to yesterday to just focus on yesterday's events. I'll click on this filter button, then I'll select user property and pick cat or dog. And then you can see underneath, it's got some values to choose from and I'm gonna choose cat person. And now I'm seeing the events only associated with users who decided they were cat people. And I can compare these values with what I get when I filter by dog person, which looks like much fewer. But be careful here, don't get fooled by these absolute numbers. If I had like five times more dog people out there than cat people, I might see more total adjust slider events for my dog people and that might be misleading. I really should be looking at these count per user stats to see which population actually prefers adjusting the slider more. But looking at what I have here, it seems like our marketing folks were right. Cat people really do like adjusting sliders more than dog people. Who knows, maybe that little circle looks like a laser pointer to them or something. So that should give you enough background to get started adding user properties to your own apps. Start thinking about what segments of your audience you're curious about, because that can start determining important factors like where you wanna prioritize development or where you wanna spend your marketing dollars. In the meantime, feel free to check out our documentation, subscribe to the Firebase channel, and I will see you soon on the next episode of Firecasts. Oh, and uh, why am I wearing a suit? Because my tuxedo's still at the cleaners. <laughs>